Alrighty, so we are back for Mr. Timber. We need to um, fix his eyes because he's got a little infection. Look at that boy. You're gonna be so big. You're gonna be so big, look at those paws. He's gonna be so big. Timber. We just went potty outside, so. That's very good, very good little man, yeah. But we're gonna clean up his eyes because he's got conjunctivitis and an infection. And so we're gonna take good care of those eyes. Yes, we are. Such a sweet boy. You're such a sweet boy. Yes, you are. Mm. We do this so everyone can see. So I have to put saline solution in his eyes uh, just to clean them out. It's it's like the um, normal saline that you would get at a hospital or something. It's like the body's natural, like so it's not gonna sting his eyes or anything, but it's just to clean. So let's see, bud. Okay, ready? Ready? I know. There, we got one drop in. Just have to hold his head up. Two drops in, good boy. Good boy. I'm just supposed to clean it out a little bit before we put in the antibiotic ointment. Yeah, you did so good. See if I can video this. So he's gonna get his eye drops and then I'm gonna try and do a first nail trim. Uh, so immediately when I got him, I was already like feeling his feet. So I just like run my hands over each foot and they should get really used to being handled. And so, little man, first and foremost, one drop in each eye of the antibiotic ointment. Again, tilting the head up. We're gonna go up. One. Two. Good boy, bud. Good boy, good job. Rub that in a little bit. Yeah, I'm gonna make you feel better. He's gonna get a brand new little dental chew once we're done with the nail trim. I'm gonna give him a little bit of a reward. Oh, do you like the smell of that? Yes, that smells good. Yeah, yeah it's nice. Actually, we might use it to distract him. So he's very interested in the smell of this because this is what I used for Aspen. You think, bud? See, it's not scary. See, it opens and closes. And we're just gonna make sure that your tongue isn't in there. What do you think? Yeah, that's nice. It's it's nice. We'll put the guard on so that he can. What do you think? Yeah, what do you think, bud? It's an interesting smell, huh? Yeah. Okay. Hi, bud. All right, let's flip you over. This is exactly what I did with Aspen as well. Give me a little flip. Flipping over. And then we'll just hold one of these chews for him to be able to work on. I think he did really well for his first nail trim and we're gonna do a bath next and see how he does but I'm gonna let him finish his lovely little reward for doing such a good job you did such a good job you didn't even notice it very much at all so we've got the shampoo out he's checking himself out in the mirror who's that who's that doggo who is that <laughs> Um, so if you guys remember, uh, from my previous videos on grooming, uh, one of the things that you can do that makes, um, bathing so much easier is if you dilute your shampoo. So add water into it and usually you can do like half and half and it makes it much more sudsy. Like it's, 
easier to wash them. So I've separated out my shampoo, put some water in it, shaken it up a little bit, and we're gonna try to, sorry, my camera angle is horrible. <laughs> we're gonna try to get the uh, little boy washed. So I guess we'll see how it goes. All right, little man, first bath done. And your burrito. Poor boy. He's so good though. Yeah, he looks so good. You're all fluff though. <laughs> you want a treat? I think you deserve one. Let's see, what are we going to give him? Let's give him one of these. Oh, and so it starts. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, do you feel like a new man? Do you feel like a new man? <laughs> oh yes, so it starts. The zoomies after bath time. <laughs> what you got? What you got? What you got? <laughs> Timmy, you did so good. Here you go. Good boy. He has a carrot in here too that he's just destroying. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. We feel so nice. We feel so nice. Oh, we feel so nice. Jimmy, so someone just woke up from a long nap. Should we go potty, Jimmy? Should we go potty? Little man, little man, you're so good. You want to go potty? Hmm? Should probably go potty. You've been sleeping for a good like two and a half hours. Come on, little man, let's go potty. Come on. Good boy, Timmy. <laughs> Good boy, Timmy. Let's go potty. Oh, such a sweetheart. Come on. <gasps> I just barely have time to get out my camera. And he goes potty. Good boy. Good boy, Timmy. Good job, bud. Timber. What you got, bud? He's now found some sort of uh, moose hip <laughs> that was buried in the grass from a, someone that lived here earlier. What is that? That's fine though. I looked at it and it, it looks normal, so he's having fun with it. Timber, what you got, bud? <laughs> I gave him his first frisbee today. No, look at you, little man. Hello everybody. So we are back. Hi Timber. You say hi. Oh, what a good boy. Look at him. Look at him. I think I lucked out. I think I did. Did Aspen send you? I think so. Yeah. You're so sweet. Uh, so we are into almost one week of having timber and I just wanted to let you guys know kind of what I've been doing for this past week with him with training and some of the mistakes that I've made some of the things that I'm trying to implement um hopefully it'll help other people that are bringing home puppies oh we are a little bit of a chewer but not bad at all so every time he's chewed or like nipped or nibbled um, he isn't as aggressive as Aspen was. Oh. oh, are you tired, little man? He had a nap and we went outside to go potty and then now he's back inside. So anyways, so with nipping, um, I haven't had to use a spray bottle. I used to use that with Aspen because she was just like relentless. We'll see how he is as he, uh, ages, but so far it's just been good enough to, uh, a supplement with something else so like if he does start to grab my hands a little bit I'll just grab a toy and redirect and that's been pretty good what else uh he's been awesome at potty training two accidents so far yeah my buddy but I've been really careful so I always take out 
him when he first wakes up. Uh, so I know like if he's had a two hour nap, he's going to have to uh, go potty. So I go outside and I don't come back inside until he has gone potty. And the two accidents that he's had have been completely my fault. Uh, the first one, I didn't wait outside. Like he didn't immediately go potty and I didn't wait for him to go potty. And so we brought him back inside and then he obviously went and found a place. And then the second time he had a really big like playtime with me. For about an hour and a half and then I didn't take him out to go potty and he um, obviously after playing for so long had to go potty. So I've just been very consistent with it. The first few nights he had to go out probably about every two hours and then <laughs> he loves his little pillow. What you doing bud? You gonna go back to sleep? <laughs> Look at this guy. Look at this guy. I've been sleeping out here so that I can be with him. Oh, my little man. But yeah, so that's why there's a bunch of stuff on the couch there. Anyways, so let's get back into some good light. Uh, so what was I saying? Um, so yeah, so he has had to go outside probably every two hours. Um, the first few nights were a bit rough. Not necessarily because of him, he actually is really good, um, but because when we were driving back, I also had my parents with me, and so the the key thing to getting enough sleep with a puppy is sleep when they sleep, and I obviously couldn't do that because the whole thing was planned where I, I thought I was going to be tenting with him. Turns out that Norway didn't agree with us on that and uh, we got rain for the two days that we were going to be bringing him back. So I had to actually share the cabin with my parents who had come with me to help pick him up and they snore, particularly my dad snores really loud. So even though the puppy was asleep, I could not fall asleep because we were in the same small area. And so I was very thankful to come back here. Uh, it's been tiring, but last night was the first night where I actually was able to get pretty good sleep with him. So we picked him up on Sunday and today is Saturday. So we've had Sunday night, Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night. So that was like the sixth night with him. And he slept, I took him out at 10.30, he slept until 3.30. So I had all that chunk of time where I could sleep, and then he went back to sleep until 6.30. So we're making progress, which is great. Um, the only place where I really would like to make more progress is the crate training. So... We have done some crate training. I am not a big fan of crate training in the house. I'll be perfectly honest. I think it's not something very natural for a dog. Uh, if you think back a hundred years ago, dogs were not crate trained at all. And even when you look at canines in the wild, yes, they spend time in dens, but... By the time they're about six weeks of age, they are coming out of the den quite often. And by the time they're like eight, nine weeks of age, they're not spending a ton of time in the den. So I feel like it's, I don't know. I don't know. I like to let him just settle where he wants to settle because in the end, I want a dog that I can have outside um, in the house with no problems. And I just start out very early with that. I do, however, think that I have to bring the crate in from the car. I've been keeping his crate in the car because I have to crate train him for the car. I think that's very, very useful because they do associate the crate with having to settle down, obviously. But it's too, I'm not taking him in the car every single day. So it's too much um, time between instances where he's put in the crate and so every time he's crying so I do want to bring it in and maybe start feeding him in the crate with the door open but so that he starts to associate that 
crate with something good. The first three days that we had him when we were doing the, the drive, he actually did really great in the crate. Um, but I had the door wide open. So what is he up to? <laughs> I'm a brand new mommy, so I have to watch where he is. Where did the little man go? Oh, he found a place. A place to sleep. <laughs> He's actually really good. I'm shocked at how good he is. Hi, Bubs. Hi, Bubs. Timber. Good boy. You're learning your name. Oh, look at you, my boy. I put a little bit of peanut butter on that. Oh, so. Masa. Was it good? So good. I'll let him play with that. Uh, yeah, so that's the area that I probably could do better with is getting him associating something positive with his crate. Uh, yesterday was the first day where we actually went and met a whole bunch of people. I took him to my, uh, my campus and he met a bunch of people. I have not introduced him at all to dogs right now. He obviously isn't fully vaccinated, so I'm very super uber selective with which dogs he's going to have any association with. Also, I need to make sure that the dogs that do meet him are very good and very well behaved because he obviously is going to pick up behaviors from those dogs. So I know of one that he is going to meet probably on Monday, fully vaccinated, of course, the other dog. And the other dog is super mellow, six-year-old male, um, very well behaved, very like kind. So I'm going to slowly introduce him to some dogs, but that is one thing where I think I've learned is a bit different, um, where I want to go a bit different than I did with Aspen. I was like super protect protective with Aspen because it is a legitimate concern that like your puppy is not fully vaccinated. You don't want them to be associating with a lot of dogs. Simple, because there's a lot of diseases that are very, very risky for puppies and you just you don't want to you don't want your dog to develop anything like that but I was so careful with Aspen that I she didn't meet a dog for a long time and so I'll be totally honest she was a bit um wary of other dogs and it's something very common with the breed I want to try and avoid that as much with him as possible so I'm going to try to introduce him to other dogs as much as I can. One thing that I loved about Aspen was that she was absolutely amazing with kids. And the reason for that is because when we brought her home, we had neighbors who had like a six-year-old and an eight-year-old little girl. And they would bring their friends and almost every single day they came to our front door ringing the doorbell saying, oh, can we see the puppy? Can we see the puppy? Come here, my boy. Come here, my boy. Have you got your toy? You got your toy, yes. Oh, there we go. To cool boy, Timber. So I want him to be really good with kids. Um, obviously because it's something good to have. And also, I'm at the age where, and I'm assuming he's going to live <laughs> for a long time, I hope. 16 years is what I've told him is the minimum. Um, he will live to see whether or not I have children. So it's really important to for me to train, even though I don't know if I'm going to have kids or not. Um, I want him to be prepared. That let's, let's put that in your mouth instead of my hand. Thank you very much. Good boy. Oh, the little man. I've already seen a bunch of Aussie traits in him. He does the sploof, the like two back legs straight out when he's super tired. Um, the sploof, the sploof, the Aussie sploof. 
Uh, he also does have nipping behavior. Um, he is very smart. Uh, I will say that Aspen, I think, may have one up on him on that, though. But that might be a girl thing. I, I've read somewhere that females tend to be a bit more well-trained than males, or like at least catch on to things more quickly. But it might also be very individual, so I don't know. But for sure, he's he's not as like laser focused. Aspen was like, boom, eyes locked, laser focused. Like she just wanted to work. And he is a little bit more laid back, which actually probably is good for me right now. He is so sweet. And he actually cuddles, which Aspen, if you guys know, she was a little Miss Independent. She, she didn't care at all about me in the first little bit. She was just like all about herself and exploring the world around her. And he needs much more reassurance he he likes to like come up and ask for cuddles he's a very sweet boy so <laughs> this is the uh reality of having a puppy <laughs> he's learning how to create train in the car because i can't have him loose in norway there's a law against it so <laughs> little man i've got the ac going i've got a lot of air you're fine, bud. So I'm feeding him in his crate tonight. And he has no hesitation going in at all. He just really doesn't like being locked in there. But yeah, I guess we'll see if that helps. I think I just exhausted him outside though. He gets exhausted very easily. <laughs> Hopefully he's like that as an adult too. I feel like when he gets to teenager years, he's gonna be a little bit more energetic. I'm not used to having an Aussie that is like so mellow. <laughs> We're not quite sure what to make of it. <laughs> what is that boy? What is that? It's cold. We're not sure it's so cold. It's so chilly. Snow's gonna be your favorite thing, bud. Is it great? <laughs> the disaster that is the house, yes. So we are going to do a little bit of ear cleaning. He's been uh, kind of like, <coughs> oh goodness me. He's been um, itching at his ears a lot. So I wanted to do a bit of ear cleaning. I don't have cotton swabs or anything but it's fine to use paper towel because we're just gonna wet it down and i know you are very interested in what i'm doing okay so we'll get it nice and soaked with the ear cleaning solution This is what I always do with dogs when they're getting a little too much for grooming. Just tends to kind of like reset them a little bit. So. end it I think in a positive note like don't end it when they're struggling like that end it when they've cooperated with you good job pups and you're not asking to get out of my lap good job pups good job pups ah we're tired it is a hot day today so he's like not even interested in going outside very much he's just wanting to stay inside I took the day at home to work because last night was a bit rough and so I I find that I'm actually more productive if I am home working and if I'm here for like when he wakes up, I take him out for 40 minutes, I exhaust him and then he falls asleep for another like two and a half hours and so I can actually work during that like that stint and 
can actually get a, pretty much a full work day in if I'm home versus like trying to get to my office, which isn't very far. It's only like 15 minute drive. But if I'm spending 15 minutes going, 15 minutes coming back, that's half an hour that I lose of him when he's asleep. So, so I've been able to have a shower and I feel really clean now, um, which is great. This is probably going to be the end of the week vlog. So he has officially been home for a full week. And I guess the things that we've tried to do in this week include uh, some training. So what I have focused on with him is recall training on a leash. So basically, you know, taking him out on a long lead and getting him used to his name and coming. And we're still working on that, but he's doing pretty well at that. We've got some basic commands under our belts. He knows sit, he knows shake, and he knows down and I'm working on touch with him. So like whenever I hold my hand out, um, he'll touch his nose to it. And we've just started that today. Besides that, uh, this week has gone really well with socialization. So he, I've taken him, uh, I think twice to my work. And once during that time, I introduced him to one of my friend's dogs who's really really great with puppies so that went very well he also met another dog another of my friend's dogs of course both fully vaccinated and both like personalities that I knew would be really great with pups um so he's seen a couple of dogs has had really great in interactions with dogs I also went with him out to eat once with a group and two of my friends brought their kids so he actually has already had two toddlers playing with him which is also really great so exposure to small kids um this week we did nail trim we've done the ear cleaning which you've seen both of those in this video uh what else have we done i mean we've done pretty good for our first week i should say um and he is doing okay with potty training. I will say that I've tried to back off a little bit because I was taking him out every single time that he was waking up from a nap. And the truth is he's going to have to go a bit longer. And so I've, I've kind of tried to push it a little bit at night. And what I have noticed is that he, he's doing great on the hard surfaces, not peeing on them. He only ever has had one accident on, like, the wood surface, the floors. What he struggles with is long carpet. He's fine on short carpet, um, but his crate has this, like, thing that can go over the mat that is a lot longer. It's for, like, I think colder weather. He's peed in there once. And I have a longer shag carpet in my bedroom, and he's peed on that twice. So I think he's mistaking it for grass. I think he's just used to, you know, something soft underneath means that he can go pee. So we're working on that. I have the room closed off right now, and I've removed that thing from the crate. So, so far, so good um, today, but he is struggling with with differentiating between longer carpets and outside. But I would like to get to the point next week where I can go for half of a work day to work and then come back and he's perfectly fine. So far, no separation anxiety, fingers crossed, we stay that way. So I will leave you guys with all of that. I hope that you've enjoyed a little bit of our life in the first week home with an Australian Shepherd puppy and I will see you guys very soon. Bye!